We are now ready to start doing some animation. For our first animation, I want to do six frames, and each of those frames will represent one of the sides of a die. We actually already have one of those. This frame is actually a five, so I just need to make it for one, two, three, four, and six. There we go, six two-dimensional arrays, each for one of the sides of a die. Now if you want, if you think that's taking up too much space, you can always write that differently. This is the exact same code, but it might be a little bit more difficult to read. So whichever way you like best is how you should write it. So now that we have six individual frames, we need to make one more variable to have that whole video. And we can call it that. Um, actually, I'll call it Annie for animation. And this as well will be an array. And it will be an array that has all of these frames in it. So each element will be a different frame. So actually, this will be a three-dimensional array because it will be an array of arrays of arrays. Now we need to change our for loop. Let's first look at how our for loop used to work. We would take a frame and we'd first look at the first element in that array. And so that would be something like this. Now inside that element, we had three smaller elements and we'd go through it one by one. So zero, one, two. Now in our case, we have one more level. The first thing will be to look at one of these. And so that will be which frame to look at. After which frame, then we're looking at which column. And then after which column, then it's which row. So before all of these, we'll need to add something. I've called that something frame, but this doesn't quite make sense yet. Let me change it a bit more. What we want is we want to take the animation. We want to look at one of the frames, the first frame. And then inside that first frame, we can look at the first column. And then afterwards, we can look at the desired row. So we're just adding in this next level, this frame part. And we're going to cycle through them. And in total, we have six of those. So we're cycling through that with another for loop. Now that for loop should happen before this for loop because this one is just to make one frame appear on our LED matrix. So we want something like this. We want to say for each frame in the range from zero to six. So we're going to go through the numbers zero, one, two, three, four, five. Let's think first about when this will be zero. When frame is zero, then we will take the first element from Annie, and that is one. After picking the first element, then we look at the ith column. That could be zero to start with. So we'd look at the first column, and then we look at the first number there. And that's basically all that we have to do. Now there is one problem, and it's all about speed. To generate this image, it will go extremely quickly. Actually, since this happens three times, then it will happen about three times the sleep time. And our sleep time is about one thousandth of a second. So we need to add some delay, but we can't just pause it here. Because if we ever pause our LED matrix, then we only get one cathode. And that's thanks to multiplexing. So instead of pausing it, we want to redraw that frame over and over and over. So it will be the first frame we draw, but we want to draw that many times. So before continuing, we want to make a new variable called speed. And this speed variable will be equal to how long it takes for each frame to display. If we give it a very low number, then we'll actually go quite fast. So I should put a comment about that. Whereas if I give a very large number, it will be like a very large delay. And so our program will go very slowly. Let's start with a speed of 100. Next, after my for loop for picking the frame, I want to put that pause in. And remember, this isn't a stop or a delay. What I want to do is I want to output that frame many, many, many times. So what I'll do is I'll use a for loop to do that. I'll say for pause in range speed. Depending on how big my number is here, the longer I have to go through this for loop. So I start off with speed equal 100. So that means this for loop has to happen 100 times. Now for this variable pause, I actually don't need to do anything with it. So I could have named this anything, and I don't actually use it later. The idea is just that I want to cycle through this loop a certain number of times, and I've picked 100 times. If I put 200 in there, of course, it will take twice as long, because it will have to do it twice as many times. OK, we're ready to give this a try. Success. Now this brings us to the end of our project. But if you want to extend this project a little further, there is an additional video about using transistors with the LED matrix. Transistors will help you protect your Raspberry Pi from using too much current across your GPIO pins. And they are especially important if you want to extend this project. Say, if you want to use a 5x5 matrix to control 25 LEDs. 
Either way, make sure you spend some time making your own custom animations for the Matrix.